I'm going to talk about um, uh, something that um, uh, came out uh, from a meetup that I am uh, part of. Um, I will relate to the meetup uh, uh, later on. Um, and, and the talk is going to focus on strong types, measurement units, and the challenge of point arithmetics. So we will start uh, by talking about strong types. And uh, we'll uh, go through measurement units and the importance of keeping safe measurement units and then go to uh, what is the point challenge and how can we address it. And then we'll dive a bit uh, technically into how to implement a method that may return different types, but still be a single method. So this is the idea. This is going to be um, um, the, the, the content. Let's start with strong types. Um, we all know that uh, if we multiply uh, duration with speed, we should get distance. And it is better if we keep the correct types for that. We also know that uh, if we call the distance method and we send it um, duration and uh, speed, then it should compile and it should return the proper result. And it is much better that the compiler will check us and will not compile, would not agree to compile wrong arguments, wrong arguments sent into the function. So this is something that we want to have. Um, so the following uh, would fail to compile if we call distance and send uh, hour multiplied by hour or uh, kilometers by um, speed, and that's good. We want that. And in order to get that, we need to use uh, user-defined literals, uh, libraries that support strong types, etc. Uh, not every operation is allowed when we use strong types. So, uh, for example, uh, if we go for uh, uh, either Chrono or other libraries that support uh, time uh, uh, arithmetics, then if we add time and duration, this is fine. You get a new time, a result of type time. But... Um, um, you can subtract also time and time and get back duration, like what you can do also with a chrono library. Um, and also adding uh, two durations or subtracting durations, that's fine. But you do not want to allow, for example, adding two time points, because there isn't any point in adding two time points. What should be the result? What was the actual um, idea here. What would you like to express? Well, not so clear, so better not to support that. When we go to point arithmetic, um, and suppose that we assume we have a proper constructor for creating a point out of uh, coordinates, the question is whether we should allow adding two points, whether we should allow the arithmetic of adding a point to a point. Is there a point in adding two points? Now, um, the first question is, what should this point represent? Suppose that uh, we agree that uh, adding two points means add the x to the x and the y to the y. What does the 13, 17 represent here? Maybe there is a point in adding point and point different. So example, I can move a point. But adding two points is something which seems a bit pointless. Uh, on, the, on the other end, maybe there is a need. And maybe the need is, and there are other choices of doing that, and I will not discuss the other possibilities, but let's suppose that the user wants to find the middle point. And that's correct that you can find a middle point by first subtracting and getting the difference, and then adding half of the difference to the first point. But let's suppose that the user prefers to just add two points 
and calculate the average, which is a bit reasonable, I would say. So if we want to support this one, but still, in a way, we say, well, if you add two points, then the result is not actually a point. The result is something that says, okay, you added two points, so I remember that the result is something that represents the addition of two points, but it is not a point because there isn't any point in adding two points. But if you divide it by two, then you should get back a point. Okay, that sounds like something that can be useful. So uh, adding two points and then averaging should return a point, but the addition of the two points should return something which is not a point, but which remembers in a way that it can get back to a point if we divide it by two. Uh, what should be the type of the two points here? Uh, maybe we should think about something. Here we use auto, which should be a great uh, possibility. But what is the actual return type? Um, and if we do want to support that, so maybe you also want to support uh, multiplying by two. And what is the um, idea of multiplying by two? Um, uh, yeah, I, I see in the chat that there is a discussion about, hmm, but uh, we can use here uh, uh, move as a moving a vector. Let's put it aside and, and say, yeah, we do want to add two points in order to divide by two, or we do want to multiply. So why do we want to mul multiply? Because maybe we want to get uh, a point which is closer to, uh, in this case, to P2. So uh, if you want uh, uh, something which is close, closer to P2 in uh, some kind of a ratio, so we want to multiply P2, uh, add P1, and then divide by 3. And only then we should get back a point, and we want our compiler to watch out for us. We want the type system to make sure that we use point only if at the end we actually have a point. So. Uh, we may also want to um, divide by three and add, then add uh, two other uh, um, two times p two divided by three, and again we should have here a point. So the challenge, the challenge is adding points like, for example, two points, three points, n points, multiplying and dividing, and the result cannot be used as a point unless getting it back to a single unit point. The rules would require you to rely only on compile time information. So we cannot use it uh, with n, which is a variable, only with const expressions. And implementation shouldn't be specific to class points. So we want something that can work with other types with the same semantics. OK, let's, let's try having that. Let's step, do step by step. Uh, let's explain first the rules with some pseudocode. So again, we want to add two points to get back something, which is not a point. If we divide it by two, we get back a point. Uh, we can um, divide the point and get back something, and, but then if at the end it goes back to the single unit, it's back as a point. Step number one. We can create a class and call it two points. It's not the best solution. We would not keep it, but let's start by thinking about, okay, we can have a class, call it two points. So then if we add two points, we would just return a new object of type two points. And then we can create a operator divide, getting a number, and returning, mm, returning if we are in two points and you divide by two, then we'll return a point. But mm, here I'm relying on runtime information. And what should I do if the number is not two? Um, I cannot overload on the actual number. I can only overload on types. Mm, and I don't want to assert in runtime. So if you divide it by another number, I only want to 
return something which is not a point, but I don't want to throw an exception, for example. So a runtime behavior is not something that I look for. So this one cannot work well for me. Um, okay, so uh, maybe if you cannot do that, um, you cannot divide by a number, maybe we can use templates, templates specialization. So let's take a look of another possibility. Suppose that we have a template plus divider and we have a specialization for divider for two, which means, oh, if you are going to divide by two, then um, I know that the result is going to be back as T. Then we can have a two points operator, which says, okay, please call divider with the number, but A, you, can do, you cannot do that. This is a variable. It cannot be used as a template parameter. Okay, so we have to go back and say, um, you know what? The number that you want to divide by is a template parameter. But then the int here is just not relevant anymore. It's redundant. You just sent the number as the template parameter. So maybe it can work, but it would be quite ugly. So let's go for something a bit uh, more sophisticated, but better. Let's get a parameter of type number, which has a template argument num. And num is an int, but you have to provide it uh, in compile time. And now when you divide by number, you have to divide by an actual number. But the number should be known at compile time. So this, this looks a bit better, um, but there is a language substitute for that. So we just, uh, maybe we would look for a language substitute in a moment. But what we have here is a template with specialization saying that, okay, if you divide by two, I know what to do. But uh, another problem is, what about dividing by three? Suppose that I have uh, addition of three points. How can I do it for any number? Okay, so uh, we want a class number. Uh, uh, we can divide two points by number two, but that's not strong enough. We may replace number, number in the class that we just uh, saw with a class that we know from the language, std ratio. And std ratio is um, a perfect fit because std ratio can now hold any number as a denominator and a denominator. So we can say, okay, um, we have two points. We can divide it by ratio of two and we should get back a point. But uh, two points uh, also is not something too strong. Maybe instead of having some class for specific for two points, we can have something as aggregating some number or some ratio of points. So um, we look for, we would look for something a bit better. Uh, let's replace the two points with an aggregator of a type T, which says I'm holding currently an amount of T and the amount has a numerator and denominator, which means I have uh, two thirds of a T, four halves of a T or any other combination of numerator and denominator of T. And now we can have arithmetics on this aggregator. And we can check at compile time whether this aggregator or whether the operations on the aggregator result with the single unit and then get back the single unit as T. So um, the next step would have would be to have inside point operator plus operator, for example, adding to adding two points and then saying, okay, if you add two points, I will create an aggregator of point, remembering that this aggregator actually holds two points. We can do the same for other operations, like for example, for multiplication. So if you multiply um, an aggregator, and you multiply it by a specific ratio. 
then the result can be in the same function two different things. And we rely here on the auto return type, but we rely also on if const expression and we rely also on the fact that the, the function is a template function. And being a template function means that eventually it's not a single function, it creates several functions. So if, and the if is checked at compile time, uh, the numerator multiplied by the number that we uh, mult, by the number that we uh, have on the ratio that we multiply by, does not equal the other side, then it means that we are not in the single um, uh, unit case and we return an aggregator. On the other case, we find out that the result is a single unit and we return an actual T. Now, there is a need to unsafe multiply because we do need here still to multiply by N, which is the ratio. And for that, we need to ask the T, the actual T point, for example, point. Uh, you should multiply by N. You should return point because we want to return point, but you cannot know whether you are in the single unit case. We know that you are in the single unit case. So we create a method called, that is called unsafe multiply. You can do it with other uh, name or with actual multiplication with a token, for example. So what we have here is the case where the result is still an aggregator or the case where the result is the single unit. And it means that we have a single method. Well, it is not a single method. It is a template function, which actually returns different results, keeping type safety for point arithmetics or for any kind of arithmetics that needs to preserve the single point or the single unit safety. Uh, and it works. So for example, if I um, add two points and print it, and I have uh, extractor overloaded, then it prints that you have here an aggregate with a ratio two for one, and this is the result, but it is not a single point. But if you then divide it by two, and I have an extractor overloaded for point, then I get into the printout of a point, and this is a single unit point which at the end preserves safety, not only with the measurement units, but also with not having uh, two points as a point, because as we said, this is pointless. Uh, it can even work with uh, sum. If you have a variadic uh, template for summing, it can even work for average. Uh, this challenge was uh, part of a uh, meetup um, uh, that we have in Israel, the core CPP meetup. Uh, actually, it, it is now open uh, because it's uh, in Zoom. It is now open uh, abroad. Uh, we have, I think, the next meeting on the 24th of uh, March. You can look up for core CPP meetup. And Adishavit, uh, who is one of the organizers, uh, just raised the question or, or the um, topic of fine space types. This is the blog where he wrote about that and then he uh, presented it in the meetup. And the challenge was to uh, implement the actual code to preserve a fine space or a fine arithmetic, uh, showing it for point, but in a way uh, for any type. And this is the result. Uh, the result was presented uh, in one of the next meetups right after uh, the challenge was uh, casted. Uh, this talk ignores overflow and signed and unsigned issues. There is a great talk by uh, Marshall Cloud about midpoint. You should take a look how complex is to do arithmetics on signed and unsigned and uh, different types. So we could just rewrite the entire talk and make it more correct, but still the idea of preserving the single unit arithmetic is something that is re uh, required. 
Uh, other uh, resources include uh, Safe uh, Numerics, uh, Jonathan Bokara's uh, name type, which is quite relevant to this uh, topic. And I think this is where I conclude. So let's take a look if there are any questions that uh, you raised. I don't see any question. You feel free to raise one uh, if you uh, if we still have time. I see in the chat a comment that, uh, yes, uh, this topic is related to actual engineering and scientific applications. And uh, you can go back in the slides. You will have access to the slides, of course. And uh, if we go back in the slides, uh, we have here um, links to uh, libraries that manage uh, the proper measurement units for physics and uh, electric engineering. So take a look at that. Let's see if we have another comment. Um, any questions or comments, please feel free to raise them. And if we do not have any additional question, I think that I will just um, call for a Seb to go for the next session.